What is a simple function? It's a function that can have a finite amount of values within its range. A finite sum, given like this, where the functions x, a, i are char characteristic functions on a set a. <laughs> on a set a. Furthermore, it is easy to integrate by approximating a function f by simple functions. The Lebesgue integral of f can be calculated. Consider a domain f is a in all real numbers. So suppose we have a finite amount of subsets. A1, A2, A3, A4, A whatever amount of numbers. For f to be simple, f must be constant in each A. Example number one. In the subset, we're gonna evaluate, we're gonna evaluate in zero to three. So what we're gonna do is go zero to one, one to two, two to one, right? <laughs> two, two, three. <laughs> so the graph is gonna look something like this. So then it is constant by intervals. This is called a stir function. And so to further understand this, every stir function is a simple function, but not all simple functions are gonna be a stir function. And then for the final example, we have a subset of all real numbers. So our A1 is gonna be irrational numbers, and our A2 is gonna be irrational numbers. So our graph will look something like this. Which means it will be constant by subsets. Well, of a simple function. It is expressed in the next formula. We have to multiply the measure of the subset times the, the value that we have previ previously assigned to the subset. And we can see it in this formula. It is the sum of the measure of the subset times the value. If we have the set A that is from 0 to 1, and we have two subsets, subset 1 and subset 2. Subset 1 are the rational numbers and subset 2 are the irrational numbers. Now we need to assign a measure for each subset. For, for subset 1, we assign the value as 0. And for subset 2, we assign the value as 1. And for the whole, we assign as 0. Now we need to assign values for each subset. For the rational numbers, we assign as 0. And for the rational, we assign a 1. Now that we have the measures and the values, we can do the integral. The integral, as we define, is the measure of the value that we previously assigned it here, that for the a1 is 0, and the value that for e1 is 0. And the other measure of the subset 2, that is 1, and the value of the subset 2, that is also 1. So if we sum the values is 0 plus 1 and that gives us 1. How do we approach a non-negative function through a simple function? For being able of approaching a non-negative function, we just have to follow the next steps. Step 1. Divide the caramel in different subsets. Step 2. Assign a value to each subset of the cutamine of the minimum value. Step 3. Take the inverse image of the subset of the cutamine. And 4. You are done. It is very important to say that the integral of the limit of all will be the integral that we are trying to approach. In women's sum, we divide the values in x first. But in the best, we need to divide the cutamine, that is y, in subsets. In this case, we divide it in four subsets. So we need to, as we divide it, we need to know where each subset in X corresponds. From one four is from here to here. From one half is from here to here. And for three fourths is from here to here. So we have the function X squared and the domain from 0 to 1. So the first thing we need to do is to assign a value for each one. So we assign a value for 0 and for 1 half in this case because we divide it in 2. 
From zero, we assign the image inverse that is from zero to one half, and then from one half, that is from one square root of two to one. So the measure of this one is one over square root of two, and for this one is 0 0.29. We have the measure because we subtract this number from this number and in here too. So now that we have the two measures, we only need to sum the two measures and this is the integral. Here too. So now that we have the two measures, we only need to sum the two measures and this is the integral the integral of a non-negative function. First we have the formula where this means the sum. This is the measure. The y is the, the times you divide in the column in here. This is the y. And the inverse image that is the ones that are going to be here. This, these are the subsets of the column in, like I already said, and the inverse image. And we have to know that the sum of the values in y by the sum of their inverse image is going to be the integral. And we're going to see an example. This is the example of the question number three. But as in what already mentioned in the previous question, as we divide in more substance the column main, we are going to cl get closer to the original function because it is approaching. However, there will be a point in which the growth will get to a limit. No matter in how many subsets you divide the domain, that limit will be the integral of a non-negative function. Same, the integral of a function in general. The integral of a simple function can be used to approximate a measurement function uh, by partitioning the range into layers. The integral of a simple function is equal to measure of a given layer times the height of, the, of that layer. The limit of the integral is based on the area of the simple function, like Riemann's sum. We can split the horizontal rectangles uh, to approach the limit, based on the range and not the domain. The larger the number of a simple function, the closer we get to the area. We obtain vertical lines and we choose the horizontal lines. We can use the best method in uh, real life with probability. For example, when you spit, when you roll a dice, you have several uh, attempts at getting different numbers. For example, here we can see we've got one, two, three, all the way up to six. That's how the dice works. And so here we can establish a probability of each um, of each number appearing when you roll the dice. So for example, the probability of having zero is zero since there is no zero on the dice, and every other number is one sixth since there are six numbers on the dice. However, if you want more than one number, the probability increases. For example, now let's take this into consideration. What if we were to win $1,000 uh, per number? For example, here, if we rolled one on the dice, we'd get $1,000. If we rolled two, we'd get $2,000, etc. all the way to six, where we get $6,000. Um, we can see it here, visualized on the graph. It's a linear function, it goes straight up, doesn't um, have any changes in the slope. And now we can move over here to get the integral of the function. Here we can do 1000 or whatever number you get from the dice, mu times the number that you got on the dice. In this case it's 1. 1000 mu, 1. Now mu of course is the probability of each number. So you do 1000, 1 sixth, times one six plus two thousand times one six plus three thousand times one six etc and you'd end up with twenty one thousand over six that'd be your integral of the function and then here we can find the variance of said function so in this case it'd be one thousand squared times mu uh, it'd go on exactly the same as uh, in the integral and you'd end up with fourteen million five hundred sixty thousand so you do one thousand one sixth times one six plus two thousand times one six plus three thousand times one six etc and you'd end up with twenty one thousand over six that'd be your integral of function and then here we can find the variance of said function so in this case it'd be one thousand squared times mu
uh, go on exactly the same as uh, in the integral, and you'd end up with 14,560,000.